welcome crew to what are your three a channel three podcast where we take a member of the channel three community discuss three games of their choosing go through some honorable mentions other odds and ends have a nice little video game discussion i'm dan tucker and with me as always is ray going on everybody today's guest i mean i feel like this is the introduction that's going to happen more times than not is a member who i mean a member who's been here for a very long time i i actually don't know i'd have to look back and see but uh it's gotta been be on, a season been on the zero. Site. Has to be a season. Yeah, we a season, season zero guy. I mean, been on the site, contributes on the site, hangs out on the site, and we just, you know, we just, we're getting to him now. It's, it's, it's the Lego dad. How are you, sir? Good. How are you guys? Uh, we're doing good. Uh, before we get started, Dan, Dan's got some, some stuff, some business yeah, so, he needs to, uh, to address. So I, I lied a little bit to you. We're, we're breaking format for the second time. It's actually right. Ray will not have been hosting last week. So we're doing like two episodes in a row that are just going to be jacked up. So everybody's going to be happy to hear Ray back again, but Lego dad, I, I don't know if you're familiar, but I'm, before I, before I start on this, you know, one of the founding principles of, of this show, one of the founding principles of the things that generally Ray and I do with channel three is we try and keep it a, a positive place. The internet's negative enough. There's enough garbage out there. We keep things positive. But we're making today special just for you. We this oh, is the wow. this is the most deceptive we've ever been bringing somebody in. And I don't know I don't know if you've ever listened. I don't know if you're familiar that that we've been discussing you since probably episode three. We have jokingly referred to you as our one star warrior. We have jokingly and very jokingly affectionately referred to you as the enemy of the podcast. As we've gone through the history of people's games, there's so many times we we pull up a review. Well, oh, you know this is a four point six on channel three. And right there, for this all-time game somebody brings up, Lego Dad, one star, no, no review. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're bringing you on. Before we go through, before we go through our usual shenanigans, we're going to take a quick detour here. We're going to do a lightning round. We're gonna we're gonna open up with a lightning round here. I don't need a re- I don't need War and Peace. I'm just looking for a little little Reader's Digest here. Ray and I have pulled up some one star games that we we would like you to just give us a one sentence thought on, if that's okay with you. You okay for a little fun? Again, all in oh, okay. Let's all, do it. All, all in good fun. Forgive us. Forgive <laughs> us for this. We've been we've been plotting on this one for a while though, and I'm glad you were uh, were not fully prepared so we could have a little fun with this. But so so like we, we've had some of these games come up in the past. Most of the games I've pulled aside, there are a couple that that have not come up on the uh, on the on the show before. But I just want to get your thoughts on them. And I think some of them are probably some genres. But Final Fantasy, I noticed Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy 3 or 6, whichever one, 9, 10, 1 star. Boom. Why? What happened there? <laughs> what did they do to hurt you, Lego never, Dad? Never, never dug them. They're not in in the catalog to play. I dabbled with them a little bit here and there, and it just was never my genre of, of Just not games. an RP, just not RPG will, guy. Right. I will say, listening to back episodes, getting prepared for this one tonight, you have made mention of that, and I go, I bet you that's me. I bet you that's who, I, who they're talking about. I was like, oh, no, I'm going to get called out on the podcast. I knew it, but I'm prepared. So here's my explanation. It may not be a good one, but here's my explanation. It's okay. So one of the features that I love about Channel 3 and the site is getting to rate the games that you've played or you haven't. But I believe, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, that the feature of putting a game into never heard of it or playing now Uh, or rating. I think that that was a later feature. And so honestly, when I started doing it, it was just XP blast. It was trying to get some points and gain up there, but there are some like final fantasy that I just never got into. Yeah. The the speed rating was a, uh, a late season five edition, uh, which which gave the option for like, yeah, save it for later. I'll come back to it. Not interested future games. Okay. So world, so world of Warcraft, popular, broke open nope. the massive, uh, massive multiplayer online role playing game. Nope, not for me. Battle Toads. Uh, no, nope. I don't think I ever played it. That's probably one I would now put in. Never played it. All right, fair, fair. I was just wondering if that one was because that that is a notoriously there are at least two levels in that game that are notoriously destructive as far as how hard they go. Uh, they they okay. are Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle water level caliber level. Oh, so sure. I'm not sure. Resident Evil. Yeah. No, didn't didn't like it. Just didn't vibe with it because I saw. I think I saw no. what Resident Evil Two was a, a two star. It's probably XP Blast. 
That's probably yeah, what it was. Less, okay. That's my excuse. That's my right. excuse. So Not a good the, one, but that's so the, what it is. So the rhythm game genre, Guitar Heroes, Rock Band, etc. No, those are dumb. All right, I'm I'm going to ask. So there's <laughs> the, I'm I'm putting this one into a collection. <laughs> Of of just the classics, you got Asteroid, Centipede, Missile Command, Defender, the classic coin ops. Did I do one stars on those? Oh, you absolutely one starred them into oblivion. Oh, uh, yeah, it probably you're, was. We're gonna, we're gonna see some edits between XPs. now. Yeah, we'll so see. Are some... you gonna take my XPs away? Joel's gonna take them away. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're we're not again not judging. We just it's just one of those things we had to we had to ask. Doom. Yeah. No, never played it. Never played. Okay. Okay. Never How about, played it. How about uh, metal? Every Metal Gear Solid game does that fall into that same category? Never got into it. Yeah, never got into it. Try, tried, gave just it a try, it? just not. Yep, tried it and just never, never vibed with me. One, one more than I handed over to co-counsel. Every, okay. G- <laughs> every Grand Theft Auto. Oh no, I am. So I'm gonna go out here. I don't know. I'm probably gonna make some enemies. Uh, but I am anti GTA. That's fair. Uh, there's it's, there's it's some aspects fair. of the game I'm just like you know what I don't need to fill my time with that it's um, too much I'm sure I get why people like it but it's just not something I need to spend time on so and, and that's and that's perfectly respectable it's just like you said it's one that of those one. things where like all right just 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 kind of curious now I'm, I'm handing it yeah, over well, to co counsel we're gonna do a couple more <laughs> all right are right, you have Hades on this as this one star list which hurts yeah I think it's probably I don't think I've heard of that one. Oh my gosh! We got it. Okay. Fix I, 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 I actually I didn't hear about it. My brother told me about it. I wouldn't have known if my brother didn't mention it. Marbles on stream, one star. Mm, nope. You don't like don't like marbles rolling down. Never. Randomly. I don't think I heard of it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Marble gotta, Madness. Gotta, I think I gave a Marble Madness a good rating. We're we're gonna have a Lego Dad Marbles on Stream event coming up. Just just for right. you. Star Fox sixty four. I like Star Fox, but not the sixty four. I guess. So it says here you. So damn, I'm trying to write this right. We have five stars on the Super Nintendo. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah, the other there was a five star rating on the Super Nintendo Star Fox, which which I also have to tell you again, as you may have heard, we recognize five star games by you to be basically be ten stars for the rest of society. <laughs> wait, if you had Fair given enough. the Super Nintendo a one star, I wouldn't have questioned it. All right. I don't think I think that game is. Like yeah, unplayable. maybe maybe I, I just unplayable. need to spend some time going through and and reorganizing don't, my. Uh, my ratings. I was gonna say, just don't try and play Star Fox sixty four on the Switch. Don't do that to yourself. It will. Don't mm-hmm. listen. To, yeah, don't listen to Dan. Dan. Dan's a hater on the Nintendo sixty four. There are some, some games that are super great on the N sixty four and just have not. And I think it's just the mechanics of the the way that the controls for the Switch are laid out. It just makes it not I will, as fun of what I remember. I will say that the Star Fox. Like I, I'm like play all the sixty four games. I'm all about it. Star Fox is hard because it used. It utilized the C button so much, and it's very mm-hmm. hard to do it with the pro controller. So that one, that one, I'll give Dan. It's very difficult. The the yeah. rest, he's he's wrong about though. Yeah, Golden is another one that I was super jazzed about when they announced that it was coming out on the Switch for the online. But I I tried it and I just didn't like the way that the uh, the mapping of the the controls were laid out. So. How about Ori in the Blind Forest and Will the Wisps? Both of them. That one, uh, again, XP Blast, but I did, off of Joel's recommendation from his episodes, downloaded both the Ori games, and I'm very excited to get into those. This okay. this has become a reclamation, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Team Fortress 2? No, never heard of it. Oh, my God. Yeah, some of those one stars are either I just truly didn't like it, didn't get into it, or I've never heard of it. But again... Yeah. Pre season five, Ray Hearts two. Ray, I say Ray before you ask this one. He no, rated I, one and three stronger. Just so we're clear. For which one? For 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 the one you're about to ask. He he rated one and for, three strongly. By really, Kingdom Hearts two is the worst of the three main Kingdom Hearts games. Sure. Yeah. Oh Why not? man. And uh, finally, the the dad driving school. Never heard of it. One star. That's. <laughs> oh, you're you're you have homework before this That's comes amazing. out to, to get on there. <laughs> I know. It is it is linked directly to the game on uh on the channel three library page. It's it's literally just a silly like whatever, you know, it's not Flash anymore, but it's like it's basically just like an upgraded Flash animation game that the dad and Joel put out a few years ago. Okay. Uh, it's just a silly it's a silly little like five minute nonsense game. But had to had to had to have that one in here. Excellent. All right, well, we thank you for, for all the clarity here because we've been we've been waiting. This is episode. This could be episode forty six. We've been waiting forty five episodes to 
to, get to, figure out, to figure all what? this out and get answers. Who is this guy and why is he doing this? <laughs> the one, the one star warrior Lego dad. All right, so now we're going to get into some <laughs> games. So hopefully, um, hopefully you actually like it. We're not going to just talk about games. Yeah, that one stars for all my with. games. One stars. So we start out game number one, Super Mario World, popular game. We've talked about it a couple times here. Yep. Uh, so let's get some reviews. Why, why are we starting with Super Mario World? Okay, Super Mario World, wonderful game, all time favorite Mario game out of anything. Um, I remember, I think, when the SNES came out in '91, and we had moved to Oregon around that time from Washington. And we went to my mom's work Christmas party in 92, I think. And that's where I saw it for the first time. Uh, the kid that was there was playing it. And as soon as I saw Yoshi, I was like, what in the world is this? I have got to get this. And so I didn't get a Super Nintendo until 93. So that's when I started really digging into it. Um, but it's, it's still my favorite. I love playing that game. I don't play it very often. Um, it's been a while, but I just recently did a playthrough of it, and just it's so fun. I love everything about that game. I love the music. It feels familiar with the previous Mario games, but it still feels new and fresh. Um, you know, like I said, the the music, um, the the color added color variants um, with Yoshi of green and yellow and blue and the different tricks that he can do. It just it's so fun, start to finish. I love it. You have a a favorite Yoshi, or at least like a favorite Yoshi ability, because I was I, a lot of those things, especially with these older games, felt that like they just they just kept these secrets, and you just happened upon them. Like nobody yeah. told you that different right. colored Yoshi's existed, or, or that you know if you had a blue, blue Yoshi, you could fly right. anytime you felt like them. You know, did you have one that really stuck out to you? Yeah, I I think I just keep going back to the green with the fire. I just like the standard Yoshi. I like the other ones. I, I don't feel like the needed only because you know the other feature that I really like is having the cape and flying around that way with him. Uh, with mine is is needed for for my enjoyment of the game. So I kind of just lean back to the green. So how do you feel about the flying? Um, you know, obviously changing because they had the Tanuki mm -hmm. in Super Mario Bros. Three, and then we switched to this cape and. You know, kind of the uh, that gliding mechanic as opposed to just flying up for a predetermined amount of time. How did you feel about that change? I love it. I love the noise that it makes. It goes whoop, whoop, mm -hmm. or whatever it is. I I really like it. I I like the cape um, a little bit more um, than the tail. This that's that's the correct answer. Good. Uh, <laughs> how uh, uh, so? Here's another thing. I didn't think about. I didn't think about this. I actually, someone else came up with a question or or the thought, and I was like, oh yeah, I I. I noticed this. I just didn't actively know it. Uh, the the first this is the first game where you could go back in levels. Yeah. So the other right the other Mario games you played a level or you left the world and it was finished. And this one you could replay the levels. Is that something? Yeah. That you noticed or that was, like, um, was I, special to you I, at the time? I'm telling you, in my head, I didn't realize it, but I went back all the time because I needed an extra power or I needed a Yoshi and I knew where to get yeah. quickly. Yeah. I definitely go back and utilize that for the purpose of gaining, you know, extra mushrooms or whatever it is, getting a Yoshi back. So I like having that kind of ability to kind of stock your your arsenal a little bit to kind of make the next few levels. And, you know, the other thing I really like about it is it, it feels not overly challenging, but not easy either. You know, like Mario 3 or the original Mario, you can kind of go through with not too much difficulty but I, I like this one feels really balanced with the challenge it's not progressively overly difficult but it just kind of sprinkles it in here and there to kind of make it interesting you can kind of go through three or four levels and and pretty pretty easily and then this one kind of throws in a little wrench here and there so it just kind of makes it um yeah just more interesting in the long run so so you know, you, I, you obviously you played the game and you played it recently again. Did you do all the uh, all the secret zones, all the star levels? I did not all of them. I did some of them. Um, I will say that um, you know I do like the secret pathways, um, but I just want to try to play as much. I don't want to try to 
scooch too fast through the game. So that's kind of my my uh, take on it is just try to do as many of them as I can without skipping too much. So I'll, I'll finish with this. When you're playing the levels, and what is the red levels let you know that there's kind of a extra exits. Do you will you play the level twice in a row to get the extra exits, or is it just kind of going a straight path with you? Just kind of going in the straight path, to be honest. All right. Yeah. So let's move on. Um, well, right. I will say oh. the only thing that I get confused about this game is why is Chuck throwing baseballs when he's in full football gear? That one is the only thing that just kind of throws me off. Is like I think he kicks footballs at some point, but like what? Where are the baseballs coming from? I don't understand this. It's very strange. I was, I was gonna say he does kick a football at some point, right? But you are yeah. you're right. He's throwing baseballs. I was gonna say hey, I had to be a some sort of animation right. problem, but but there is a football right. already. Like, yeah. it is there. So that's the only thing I just think is a little strange about the game, but still love it. Uh, there, there has to be. See, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down a rabbit hole. There has to be some reason. <laughs> it's gonna be some, some technology reason that we throw yeah. baseballs. I, I hope, I hope there's a technology reason. So we move on. Game number two, Mario Kart. Are we talking about yeah. all of them? Some of them? A specific one? Well, I mean, the Mario Kart franchise is just super fantastic. I don't think that there's anything wrong with it at all. But specifically, Mario Kart Eight Deluxe on the Switch, incredible. The reason why is because of this very thing, Channel 3. I had gotten Mario Kart for the Wii U when it came out and had some blasts playing with my kids, playing on my own. But just the, the capability to play online with new friends on a regular basis is just a blast. I love it. I love every bit of it. So... Thank you, Channel 3, for making Mario Kart one of the best games in the world. I am terrible at this game, awful, but I never walk away disappointed. I'm always having fun with this game. Even if you come in 12th, if you come in first, great. But just it's start to finish, it is so fun to play with friends. I think it's the best friend game you could play out there. So... Um, yeah, I think it's my my second favorite game. So if you if you weren't playing with Channel Three, do you think you would still be playing the game casually, not competitively, like I am with Channel Three? But I mean, it's it's still a fun game to just kind of throw on and, and uh, race around some some courses. But it, it's it's not as fun solo for sure. But yeah, it's just I think it's it's really the best in the community aspect. So when you're racing, what uh, what character do you, do you prefer to race with, and what car? Well, I've, Tell us all about it. I've been recently with uh, Team Kamek for kart gangs, and so that's kind of just been my default for a while. But um, while Luigi, I like, and Luigi, I like, but um, the Teddy Ruxpin car, and then uh, the little blue Azul wheels, I believe, mm-hmm. and uh, Cloud Glider. I don't know if the gliders really make a huge difference for me, but I just like the look of, of that combo. Time trial people are going to be very upset with that comment about uh, gliders, sure. about the glider not mattering here. There's, yeah. there's going to be a lot of hurt people by this. But I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't I, listen. I don't know if the glider. I, it's, I'm sure it matters somewhere in in some universe. It matters. Yeah, yeah, and I know you can look at. Uh, the stats for the car, the carts, and and the wheels, and the gliders, and the change here and there. But I think it just kind of comes down to I like the look of the cloud with the Teddy. For some reason, it just kind of fits, and I may have just chose it on a whim and stuck with it. And I'm just that's what I'm used to. So I'm, I try different cart mixtures and different ways to. To race with, but that's just kind of what I go back to. So I'm, I'm all for the aesthetics. I like, I like it. Yeah. Are you? So are you enjoying the expansion? We're we're getting towards the end of all these expansions and the new courses. But are you have you been yeah. enjoying them? I do. I like them. There's some that I I don't care for. The uh, I don't remember the name of it. The bath the bathroom. <laughs> it's just kind of weird. It's fine, I guess. Um, but it, it, these new ones are really great. But I really like the OG races, courses that they've got. So, yeah, it's good. I like that they're giving us some new options to choose from. 
kind of keeps it fresh, especially with cart games, kind of mixing it up here and there. Different weeks, we play different new ones, and then we'll play the old ones. So it's fun to go and try out the new ones. So yeah, yeah. What, what, what's, the, what's the OG course? The so airport sure. one. I think that that's the clean one. I, I will tell you, I hate uh, Neil Bowser. Um, that one's just a nightmare to run. It's just constant left and right. It's a difference, but it sure is not helping by any means. But that one I just despise with every bit of my soul. And so so I'll, since you're playing and you're joining the card gangs and everything, well, what's been, I guess, what's, what's the biggest thing that you've learned? What's the hardest thing you think to kind of to compete or to kind of get better with the group? That's a really good question because I'm not sure what the answer to that is yet. I feel like I've gotten better over my racing has gotten a little bit better but it you know the thing about mario kart is you can be doing really well and quickly fall into last place so that's really frustrating as there's if you make a mistake or get hit from behind towards the end there's not a lot of time to recover um the, the races go by so fast um so i i think the thing with that I've really enjoyed is just having the opportunity to kind of do it over and over and over again, because, you know, practice makes perfect. Right. Um, so just the more you play, trying to do time trials here and there, uh, if I have time, um, that's helped But I think just playing online with people that know what they're doing and watching what they're doing has, has really helped me, um, improve in my, my racing capability. All right, Lego dad, before I go on and introduce game number three, I have to ask, is there, is there any kind of theme? Are these just three all-timers for you? Are these three games uh, with a, a little bit of recency? Just kind of curious uh, Curious what your three, your thoughts on how you assembled this were. Yeah, well, that's a good question. So the, the first one is just kind of what I grew up playing, um, really kind of diving into the video gaming um, with the Super Nintendo. I had an NES, but I think the Super Nintendo was kind of where I really started enjoying playing games and then mario kart just in general is is a really great fun game um, i think that's always going to stick in the all-time greatest games for me and then my third one which we'll talk about here in a second is kind of the newer generation of, of games and, and gameplay um, with the playstation and, and what they're able to do with the design and and fluid gameplay all the way through well, well, let's dive right into it then. It's uh, not to hold it back any longer. It's Marvel's Spider Man from 2018. Uh, yeah. Jumping in here, uh, which I I won't argue. Yeah, listen, this is as I have said many a times here, best game of the last five years, best game of the mm-hmm. the PlayStation Four generation. But before I I before I take up all the time, I'll let you open up. Uh, you, know, you you kind of started to say your thoughts here on on the the more recent games, but let me know what you're thinking. Here. Yeah. Yeah, so I played this game on the PlayStation 4 when it first came out, and then I played it again with the remastered version on PS5 when I got the Miles Morales game. And it, I mean, obviously it's it's the same game, but I liked what they did with the PlayStation 5 version, just kind of cleaned up the graphics, cleaned up a lot of stuff to make it a little bit smoother of a gameplay, I think. Um, so there's a lot of things that I really like about it. I'm not a huge open world type. I, I like platform games a little bit more than I do like open world. But this one was just so fun. I think start to finish, the gameplay fighting is really fun. Um, it seems like there's all sorts of tricks to beat the challengers. It starts off with that fight with Wilson Fisk. I think that that kind of sets it up for what the game is going to be. And I, I really like the fights, the various fights of the inner demons and the storyline co- connecting with Mr. Negative and how he knows him in his personal life with, with Aunt May, his professional relationship with Otto and seeing his character develop into the villain and even the fight with, with Otto at the end. And just like, you can kind of see how the, he's just really torn. He needs to stop him, but he doesn't want to hurt his friend. It's, it's, it's somebody who he trusts and that's kind of been broken. So he's hurt in that. So that, that development in the story just is really super immersive tugging at the heartstrings with Aunt May passing. I'm just, I will say, spoiler, alert, spoiler. May, <laughs> Oh, if you haven't played it by now, my goodness. Um, we, wel- we welcome you all. I, but yes. This is, this is a, uh, yeah. this was a, uh, my, my wife walked into the room as this was happening went, Oh my God, what is happening here? <laughs> Well, I, I'm just glad it's not Marissa Tomei again, because when she died in the movie, I, I about lost it. Uh, 
So I'm glad it wasn't Marissa Tomei, Aunt May, because I don't know. If, I don't think I could handle it again. But you got, I, I you got our also movie really bingo good... card, Ray. You got you got that checked off on your bingo card. <laughs> and uh, the storyline of his his relationship challenges with MJ, and then the connection with Miles working at the center, and and how that kind of flows into the next game with Miles Morales. I think that the connection it's a, it's a really smooth connection for the next game in the in the essentially the trilogy so those are kind of the aspects that really puts this at the top of the list for me yeah i i think i know where i want to go with my next question but i have to say i i loved the fake out early in the game too when you go to the the lab and octavius is having like a, a meltdown with the uh the, the arms are melting down you're like oh my god they're, mm-hmm. they're just gonna throw oh no they just no they, they faked you out they, they knew what you're coming here for and now you yep. gotta you gotta wait another half a game before you bring Octavius in, or before you bring Doctor right. Octopus in. That was a nice touch. So it, I wanted to ask you because this question wasn't kind of we. I told you before the the podcast, Ray and I usually have we we've got prepared some kind of like follow up questions that we think where things may go. But you, know, you you talked a lot about the characters and the story and and probably one of the more ridiculous things in in most comic books and probably especially in Spider Man is how many characters intertwine with his life and this game included right you, you talk about how like okay the the main villain of the game is his boss <laughs> effectively is what it comes down right. to but like it never feels forced in this game especially like it's only if you stop mm-hmm. and look back like oh it's, it's all this but they, they did a really good job balancing that but the thing I, I really wanted to bring up was just this was a game where you know, I, I joked about Final Fantasy X when we were talking talking beforehand. Like, if you want to rip Final Fantasy X, that is that's one of the first games where I really remember just like they added voice acting to a game, not like okay, we videoed mm-hmm. somebody and used it for a cutscene. The the voice acting in this game was just dynamite by yeah every everybody from Yuri Lowenthal, who I love the fact that he sorry Ray, I'm going to do it here. I love the fact he got a little extra shine by getting to appear in into the spider or what across the spider verse and uh got to go to like the premiere and everything as uh yeah as like a rec- fully recognized as a spider-man with the rest of uh the rest of the crew there but the, the people who did the voice yeah. acting in this game were all really good yeah yeah i that's that's another aspect that i i didn't think to mention but yeah you're absolutely right i think that they it just it feels like an immersive film that you're a part of you get to to play part of the story i think more than i don't know in my opinion it feels more immersive than some others um i'm not a comic book guy I, i've never read i never got into comic books so all the connections maybe that are there i i don't pick up on that but i like that they they added him into into the movie just because it it, it feels like they're honoring the fans you know in that way so that's that was really great to to see so so i'm, I'm gonna ask then so you talk about not really an open world player traditionally how far did you get into this game because i mean listen this, this game is a collectathon for me it was never painful myself i'm not judging if it was for you but you're talking about like mm-hmm. there's they it, it's kind of a joke of like spider-man webbing his backpack to a random wall when he's got to go you know he's in high school but he's got to go be a superhero and he'll web his backpack to a right. wall and like one of the running jokes of the game is there's like 30 of these backpacks just lying around the city <laughs> that you can go yeah. find. Or, you know, I, I couldn't even tell you how many crimes, what, like 10 crimes per district, like a hundred just random crimes happening through the city. Did you go yeah. through the collectathon piece of this or did you just not? Yeah. Play? Yeah. That, that was the other thing I really like about it. You've got the story that you can follow. You've got your side missions that you can do, but you can also just spend time winging through the city, just checking things out, enjoying the beauty of New York. I've never been there, but I feel like they did a really great job of showing you what New York city looks like. The smog and research mission like, and how dirty New York city is. <laughs> um, I like trying to find the, the backpacks, especially ones that are really hidden. Like, you know, you're in the area, but where I think there was one that was like in a tunnel over on the edge of a park near the water. And you have to, like, I'm right here. Where the heck is this stupid backpack? It's but it's piggy. way down in the I'm tunnel. Here. Yeah. Um, so having that or, or finding the cat with the camera, trying to take pictures of the cat, like it doesn't change the game story for me, but it's fun to just kind of do that. Like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to do this for a while. I'm going to, I've got an hour I can kill tonight to play games. I'm just going to swoop through the city and see 
what I can do without doing any missions. Or you'll be swinging along, and then all of a sudden there's like a cop chase, and you go and you stop a bad guy real quick, and and then move on and go find a couple more backpacks. So I, I really like that. Yeah, it's just a fun thing to throw on and and just kind of do little side missions and get what you need to do to to get to that hundred percent. There's not a lot of games that I do 100% in terms of like side missions and stuff. Usually I go through the story, and there's a lot of games I skip through the cinematic cutscenes because I just want to play the game. But I, this one, I just spent probably the most time on just exploring and, and seeing what's out there. And, and I'll, sometimes I'll just kind of spend time in one section of New York and just get everything in that area before I move on. Even if another backpack's right to the right of me in this area, I, I need to not leaving the borough in this area. Yep. So yeah, it's yeah, funny. you can talk game. about the cutscenes because I, I I've been trying to finish Horizon uh, Zero Dawn before Spider Man Two comes mm-hmm. out, and that's one where like I, I I love the game. I'm enjoying the story. It's it's fantastic, but I really don't care about the cutscenes in this one. I, Lance Reddick, yeah. great great job by him, and I can't remember her name from from Mythic Quest who who does Aloy, but. Forgive, forgive me for that if somehow she ever wanders into this dark pit of the internet that we're in right now. But, uh, <laughs> but, but Ashley Birch, that's it. Sorry, I, had, I, I knew I had it on the tip of my tongue. But I, th- it's funny because the cutscenes, I'm like, some of them I'm just skipping. Like, let me just get to the next part of the story here. I, I get the gist of it. Let's go. Right. Let's go. But not not a single one was I going to skip in uh, in Spider Man. Um, yep, never did that this, in this game. Both times I played it through, I never skipped any of it because I felt like the story was a part of the game more so than others that I've played in my experience. Yeah. I, I love their use of, I, you ask, put a gun on my head. Like I'm, I'm not a, you know, I know enough about the comics. I've read comics and you put a mm-hmm. gun in my head and ask me who Mr. Negative was before they started talking about him for the game. I've got no clue, but again, they, they take like a, a D what I will assume was a D list villain and pull him out and, really give him more than half of the game to carry yeah. it and really make it impactful and not just like some kind of, uh, you know, whatever throwaway villain really did a good job with it. Right. So I got to ask yeah. what, one more, one more thing. Do you have any, any favorite power or power that like, okay, I, when I got this upgrade or I got this power, this is the one that's really helping carry me through this game. No, nothing comes to mind to be honest with you. I felt like the different abilities that they gave you, um, seem to fit well with what you needed to do next. Uh, so yeah, I, I just think that they, yeah, nothing really comes to mind, and and uh, I just liked every every aspect of the game. What one more for this one? Was there a, a favorite suit? Because as you're, you know, as you get your backpacks and you're doing a bunch of other stuff in the game, there, there's narrative suits that come up through the course of the story, but sure. there are a lot of ridiculous suits ranging from uh, just Peter Parker in his underwear. To even suits like when, when Spider Man No Way Home came out, they added his suits from that movie into the game, and the game had been out mm-hmm. for what three, two or three years by the time that movie came out. And they are they added those back in there. But any any favorite suit you would uh, ride around town in? I don't. Uh, I just kind of stick with the standard suit that they give you. I think it, it's fun collecting the additional suits, and once in a while I'll kind of throw on a different one and. And then I go, this one looks ridiculous. I'm not going to play with this one anymore. Um, I think the, yeah, just kind of just always go with whatever standard first suit that you're kind of given is, is kind of my go-to. Yeah. I, I like that. It was, it was unique kinda for boring. the game. It was like a design, a design requirement for them at first needing that white, <clears throat> that white aspect for the suit. Cause they had to figure out how to make it look good in the game. Like for trying to figure out how to make him yeah. spin and everything while he's in the air. They, they did that. Like, actually it looks good. We're just going to leave it. So. Yeah, which is weird because with pre-orders of games now, they go you know to entice you to get to to get the game early. Is is hey, if you pre-order it, you're going to get these suits that you're not going to be able to probably get elsewhere. And I go, that's awesome, and it tricks me, and then I probably won't ever use them. So, so they you know, big game company, they win, whatever. Hi, I'm Adnan, one of the co-hosts of Strangecast. And I'm the other co-host of Strangecast, Adam. Yes, this is Strangecast, Play One vs. The World's Life is Strange-centric podcast. We mainly talk about Life is Strange, but we also talk about games from Deck Nine, from Square Enix, from uh, Don't Nod, and we also bring on people from the community of Life is Strange, and also developers, and including voice actors. 
uh, many of whom have won awards for their performances. So come check us out on all major platforms, including YouTube, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. Come check us out. Strange Cast. Cheers. All right. On to honorable mentions. We're going to talk about three games that, uh, well, three, three and change, I guess, in this case, that uh, we're next up on your list. Didn't quite make the cut here. We're going to stay in the superhero realm for a couple of them. We're going to start off with yeah. Batman Arkham City. Uh, you know, you talk about not being a big open world game guy, but this one, guess what? We're back in the open I world, Lego Dad. We are back in the open world, and I'm not a big comic book guy, but I love Batman. He's always been my favorite superhero of all time. Actually, side note, when I was a kid, I was born in southeastern Washington, just outside of Walla Walla, and a lady that went to our church when I was little, she is cousins with Adam West. And so we went to her house one day, and she showed me pictures of her growing up with her cousin, Adam West, and it just blew my mind. I couldn't believe that she was a family member of Adam West. So that being said, Arkham Trilogy is my favorite trilogy of any game I've ever played. I think because, obviously, Batman's my favorite superhero. I liked what they did. Arkham Asylum was super great. But I liked the open world aspect of this. As not being an open world fan, I really enjoyed the ability to kind of cruise around Gotham City and explore what was going on. And just everything is dark about it. it all the aspects that I love about Batman are here i mean mark hamill is a joker are you kidding me he's so good his voice his laugh everything about him he's he's on par with the ledger i think you know the start of asylum really grabbed my attention i knew it was going to be a wild ride with these batman games um but out of the three being city the new ability to again explore the city versus asylum kind of being on more of a specific path uh i'll Kind of repeating, I love the different bat suit skins, even though I kind of stuck with the classic Batman, the blue and the gray look. Uh, that's kind of what I've always loved and enjoyed about Batman. Um, adding new character gameplay with Catwoman was fun, getting to play as Catwoman and, and kind of figuring out the puzzles. I like when games add in puzzles that I can try to figure out, like how to, what do I need to do here? How do I need to move things around? What do I need to hit? What do I need to, to focus on? Swooping down and slinging off the tops of buildings. Uh, is super awesome. Um, his different gadgets that you can utilize during the puzzle solving, the visor for x-rays and or the spray tool to make the explosion. I love all of that. And I guess probably not for spoilers, but this game has been out for a while. I it's think been out longer the, than uh, Spider-Man has, so yeah, go for it. Yeah, okay. So we're safe to say the death of the Joker with the fake gag death was pretty great. I thought that was a nice little spin that they did. And then there's just the details of the physical state of the Joker that he's in towards the end. It's just, they really capitalize just how dark and evil he is. Yeah, I, I love that game. What? So I like fun. the And I can't wait for it to come out on the Switch. I like the clay... Well, that's, yeah, delayed for that, so that's a different discussion for yeah. another day. But I, I love the clay face twist because there's there's stuff throughout the game that's like giving you clues about what's mm-hmm. happening, and they... they, they pull that twist of swapping him at the end. You're like, I should, yeah, there's, there's points where like, if you use the x-ray vision, you'd see something's wrong. Uh, and things like that along the way. That's, that's just fun. And yeah, I mean, I remember the first time cracking Arkham Asylum and to your point, right? Like I, I didn't know. I, I, like I I was coming out of my video game, dark ages and I turned it on and like, Oh my God, Kevin, Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill are doing this game. Like they pulled out the Batman, (laughs) the animated series voices for this. Let's go. Yeah. 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 For serious. And both Spider-Man and Batman had moments where I'm like with, with Arkham Asylum, it was the first time I hung somebody up by the gargoyle not hung them up by the gargoyle, but I accidentally threw a batarang and cut them down on top of their other henchmen. And they all started freaking Mm -hmm. out. I'm like, Oh, I'm I'm Batman. Like it's on. This is, they, (laughs) they nailed it with this. There's some, there's something with Spider-Man that had that same, like just, as you're webbing people and you're swinging around the city, it has that same feel. But before Spider-Man, no, Arkham, Arkham did it. In Arkham City, you don't have the Batmobile. You're you're just kind of flying around and navigating the city. But yeah, it, it really works kind of going back and forth and, and kind of what you talked about with Spider-Man. Like there's a lot of characters, there's a lot of detail throughout the whole thing that's that's keeping you 
engrossed in the whole thing. Like, there's no, I don't, I don't feel like there were really quiet patches or slow patches in this game. That game, I don't remember. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, I mean, there, there are down points yeah, in, I, in night to finish it off, but that game moved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think just start to finish. You know, with Asylum being the exception, because I think it's it's probably as good as City in terms of like just. The navigation and and the gameplay. Um, Night was was good. I didn't hate it, but I don't love it. Arkham is a really great introduction, but City really just kind of expands on everything and and just opens the world up to to Gotham City for you. So we talked about collectathons. You also talked about puzzles. I have to ask about the Riddler trophies. Then did you did you do it? Most of them, not a hundred percent. I would if it didn't take me too long. But if I felt like it was killing too much time, I would just end up moving on disappointingly i i would move on but yeah that's one this is one game that i i i think with the upcoming release on the switch even though i have it on playstation i got to double dip and, and get it on the switch because it's going to be fun to have batman on the go I, I may re-explore that that angle and and try to get all those trophies because you know why not who I cares can't, i can't do arkham knight was too much they i i could do it in city arkham knight there were too many of them that were too ridiculous by that yeah way. I was like, I'm out, guys. Yeah. I'm out. I'm done. <clears throat> yep. All right, now I tease. We've got one more superhero game coming in here. Not an open world this time. We're, we're going uh, a much more linear game here with uh, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, another recent, uh, you know, th- somewhere between this generation and the immediate last generation. It was kind of, you know, released for both at the same time here. Um, you know, you, you, uh, I will not, I will not bust your chops or, or not call into question the one starring of Marvel's Avengers, uh, for this one, but <laughs> this, this game kind of got, as I've, I've said on channel three before, as I've, I've yelled at the clouds and said, this game kind of got left in the wake of Marvel's Avengers getting just dumped on, uh, because that had mm-hmm. a lot of like, you know, and again, they've, they've delisted that game, but you know, this one that that was all live service and loot boxes and everything else that were involved with that. But yep. nope, not this one. So tell me, tell me about your Marvel's event, uh, Marvel's uh, guardians of the galaxy, not Avengers. Uh, tell me about your guardians. Yeah, experience. Marvel's guardians of the galaxy. So in general, guardians of the galaxy is up there with X-Men as my favorite group of superheroes. There's a lot of really great aspects to the Marvel world that just makes my son go crazy over but i could you know leave it or take it uh guardians of the galaxy is a really great group of characters i think that they for the movies they really cast them really well i really like uh, you know without knowing anything about the comics because i'm not a comic book guy i'm assuming that they really nailed it on the head with with how they cast them they kind of did their own thing game, actually yeah they did their oh, own did thing they? okay yeah. okay fair enough um but with this one i felt like it it felt like the movies with also still being original. Um, I think that there was aspects to Peter Quill that kind of, I could see the connection to Chris Pratt's version of that. Um, but it was still its own thing, you know, rocket similar voice to Bradley. Uh, what's his name? Um, yeah. Cooper. Yeah. I'm going to get yelled at probably Bradley Cooper. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it still felt original, but the, the key thing for me on this experience was the colors that they used visually for this game and the music. Oh my goodness. I thought the music, they nailed it on this. I think it's it, really great soundtrack, the, you know, during the big fights when you can kind of huddle up and, and hit the, the Walkman and, and they play a new song versus what you were just previously listening to during the fight. It's just so cool. I love everything about it. And, you know, it's not too challenging, but it's not super easy either. Um, there's some hidden gems along the way. You can get the old school suits and comic book suits and whatever that they have out there. You can kind of find, but it's not going to change the story for you. It's not going to be super needed, but I will say I played this game up until about chapter six or seven, I can't remember what it is. And then I, I got mad and rage quitted. And it's a scene, it's a cut scene where he's at his his childhood home and all the guardians are there and his mom's cooking dinner and he's working on a car. And then it's not really her because it's not reality. And, and you have to, like she hu- goes to hug you and you have to push her away. And the timing is weird. You have to do a certain button mashing. Otherwise it kind of, cuts to the end of the game and rolls credits. You're like, 
what the heck is going on? I don't understand. This is so confusing. So I quit it and I got so mad. And then, you know, bless his heart, my little nine-year-old gave me some education on the game. And he goes, no, you have to do that. So he showed me and I started the game up again and I'm loving it again. Oh, <laughs> that's right. It doesn't give you, it doesn't come up on the screen and tell you like a quick time animation. Like you have to, nope. you have to figure out like, oh, this isn't right. And start like pressing buttons to, yes. Like you're and trying you have to, to skip do a something. Scene. I'm not going to say what it is, so yes. I don't spoil it for anybody. But you have to do a certain thing, uh, and if you don't do it right, it's going to start you over essentially. And I was like, "This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in a game." And so I did not like it, and I turned it off, and I stopped playing it for about a year. And uh, you know, again, like I said, my my nine year old who's on channel three, Sky Shark, he. He's like, no, Dad, you got to do it this way, and so he he gave me some tips. <laughs> it's enjoyable again, so yeah. So you brought up the soundtrack, which I, I have. We we got to talk about the soundtrack because I, I I again not not intimately familiar. There have been various iterations of the Guardians of the Galaxy and even Peter Quill through through the years that I'm familiar with, but I, I thought the uh, the soundtrack thing was a bit more of a James Gunn invention, and they really tied it into this game well without saying like. Mm-hmm. Like you said, they they made it its own thing from the movies. You have characterizations that are kind of there, but I have to ask. So right. the soundtrack, what was your what was your favorite track? Yeah, do you I know don't. Off the top of your I head? don't know. I don't really have a specific favorite. I just think uh, overall, in general, like they just really did a great job with with the music, kind of making that a part of the maybe part of the narrative, but just kind of its own character too. Of it, just kind of they they chose the right music to kind of pump you up when you needed to be. So they've got various songs and, and yeah, I just really like what they did with that. And and probably is because of the James Gunn aspect, but yeah, it's, it's super enjoyable in that way. So it, it's funny. I, I had to bring up the soundtrack because like you said, you're in the middle of these epic fights and you get the, you know, you charge up the ability and you huddle up the team and you, you know, there's quick time events to like pick choices between what you're going to say to them that, you know, may or may not boost the team. And then you hit the walk man and like kickstart your heart comes mm-hmm. on. You got Motley crew jamming in there and like, or, you know, like my, my, everybody wants to rule the world is a, a top tier song for me. Or like that will come on. Mm-hmm. The one that cracks me up that I was trying to, that, that I was explaining to my son because he and I were walking around a horror, uh, you know, we were at a, at an amusement park yesterday and they're doing like their horror nights. And it goes from, you know, like five forty-five. They're they're literally playing "I'll Tumble for You" by Culture Club, which is the one that I, I got to come back to here. <laughs> and it goes into like the dark and evil music. So the, you have these points in the game where like it, it's playing "Final Countdown" by Europe, and like you, know, you got right. these like charged eighty songs. And then like there's one time, all right, let's go, everybody huddle up, and you're like, let's go, let's get out there, finish this thing. And then "I'll Tumble for yeah. You," and you got Culture Club playing. Right, right, like, right. Yeah, and you I know love that, the way that, that these like incongruous songs. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that always makes me, you know, reminds me of, of Billy Madison grew up watching Adam Sandler movies. And, and that's just a, just a random song to put in there. And uh, Final Countdown, you know, that's always a, a good one for me because we actually played that when my wife and I got married. When we came into our, our wedding reception, we came down some escalators to that song specifically. So, yeah, those probably now that you mention it, they're probably the ones that stand out to me for for personal reasons but yeah i think just again overall the music in that game really really makes it stand out as a as an honorable mention for me uh, i love the ridiculous ones too uh, that's the, the yeah so, so did you did end up finishing the game or no not quite uh just because i i recently picked it up but again it it kind of stands out as as needing to be on the list because of just the music the music Go. is awesome Go go again. Go finish it. You need and and I will tell yeah. you. Oh yeah, I'm I'm currently working on it right now. So yeah, s- um, I think there's so 16 the chapters. I'm I'm 11 in. So um, getting close to the end. Yeah, stay stay till after the credits. That's all I gotta say. Okay, excellent. Be important for you. All right, so the last game we're gonna talk about honorable mentions at least is a combo: the Fall Guys Mario Party combo. The combo we never saw coming. What? Uh, why why are we talking about these two together? My, my guess, I had two guesses. I why well, one? It was a family game night. That, that's my guess. Okay. Why? But what? What's the what's the Fall Guys Mario Party combo about? That's correct. You you win the big prize. So nailed, it's the party aspect. Um, <laughs> yep. Fall Guys Wednesday nights uh, with Channel Three. So Wednesday nights is when my boys and I are home. 
uh, together. My wife and my and our daughter they go to to youth group, and uh, so we we play Fall Guys and and Fortnite together. And uh, every once in a while, we'll go, hey guys, let's let's fire up Mario Party, and the four of us will play together. Um, me and my two boys and my daughter, and it's just the the party aspect of of getting to play with a community of people is just so fun. Fall Guys is is fun to play. I was playing it a little bit earlier before we we met tonight, and um, and it's great. It's it's a fun, silly, dumb little game that they did a really great job on. Um, but it's it's more fun with with your friends, you know. Um, and Mario Party, we actually I played it with my kids the other night and uh, ruled the kingdom and and beat them and took first place. Um, but yeah, it's it's so fun to just play a board game on the Switch. Wait, and, you you beat them and you didn't get the stars uh, yanked out from under you? <laughs> they oh, no. take control and beat me, and so it's fun to watch like the different. Yeah, so you know the the part about you know Mario Party is, is the board game style. Um, we like playing board games, um, but this this is fun watching how they try to figure out what their best attack for the game is going to be. Which way am I going to go? Which path am I going to go? Am I going to try to get more allies to, to get more dice rolls? Am I going to try to get coins and and try to get as many stars as possible? But you also got to be careful because you can't make enemies in the game because they'll take away your goods. You know so. It's trying to try to balance like which of my kids am I going to take advantage of and which ones am I going to try to buddy up with and hopefully that'll play in my favor. Um, so there's a lot of different ways and angles that you can play Mario Party. And, uh, you know, again, just Fall Guys is just super fun with the different skins that they have. It's so silly and stupid looking, but it's so fun. They did such a great job with it. Uh, the music is fun and and, you know, it's not overly challenging, but it's not easy either so yeah i i just love that that community party aspect of both of those games combined oh uh, yeah i always say you know i i play fall guys twice a week i play two games on wednesday and then and then i wait till next wednesday to play it again it's it's a game that it's fun but yeah it's it's fun to play with the community so that, that's the only mm-hmm. time i'll pick it up but yeah right. playing the party games with the with the crew with the family that's just yeah that's the, the only that's the only time Mario Party is fun too, by the way. Yeah. What a time to be alive, you know? Getting oh, yeah. to play, getting to play with friends. Absolutely. All right. On to the future. Talking about a future game that you're looking forward to. And actually, you know what's funny? By the time this comes out, because we're recording a few weeks ahead of time, we're banking some episodes. We will just have gotten Marvel Spider Man 2. So let's talk about looking forward to this. Yeah, you, know, you mentioned you you played the little uh it was a, it was a pretty healthy side game, a little more than an appetizer in the Miles Morales game, uh, but we're we're getting mm-hmm. a. I mean, this thing's going to be a blowout. They're blowing out the city. They're everything's bigger. You can ride game ride ride uh, ride rides in Coney Island for all that matters. But you know, <laughs> right. what do you what are you looking forward to here? I I think that the aspect. I mean, the trailers have been just so rad. Um, I think that there was you know NFL game the other night, and they uh, the Seahawks and the Giants were playing. Uh, sorry, Brian, but the Seahawks won. Oh, don't worry. Uh, Ray's, that- Ray's right there with him. Don't worry. You can apologize to Ray, too. Okay, it's, it's been a, it's okay been, you Giants fan. Okay, fair enough. It's, it's been uh, tough there. Yeah, Spider-Man 2, the trailers have been incredible, and I think the thing that I'm, I'm looking forward to most about this is just kind of wrapping up the trilogy, right? So you've got Spider-Man, you got Miles Morales that they tied in with the first game and, and that being a playable character. And then he gets his own game and it was fine. It wasn't anything spectacular, but it was good. Um, but, and then this one's tying into the, the, the other two. And I really like that aspect. That it's just a continuation of the game that you've been enjoying. I think that the, when this is said and done, I'm guessing it's probably going to be a top trilogy for me. You know, uncharted series was really great. I know there's four of those. The Arkham series, like I mentioned be- before, but you know, definitely with with this one is it, what they're doing with that and expanding it out, adding extra features, doing extra stuff, riding the roller coasters, that sort of stuff. It's just super, super exciting. I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what they have in store for us on that one. Yeah, I'm just waiting to see the uh, the character swaps. They basically just like you know that free time, open world city time. You can just swap between. Yeah. Peter and Miles, whenever you want, you can just look over and you'll see the other one swinging around 
through the city too. It's not like they just disappear. Like you will see them. Yeah. Cause Peter, he kind of, I mean, he was there a little bit at the beginning of miles, but then he kind of just took off and you were just miles the whole time. Whereas in the first one, you were Peter most of the time, but you also got to play as miles a little bit. And then they introduced miles as, as a Spider-Man and, and now, you know, here you get to play as both of them. Um, I believe if I'm not mistaken that you kind of switch between miles and Peter pretty much Um, as, as wanted for open world time. Yeah. I think it's, I'm really excited about it. So I actually, I took a day off of work to, to play that. My, my youngest, he has Fridays off from school every week and so i took that day off of vacation and and we're going to be playing some spider-man 2 that day so yeah I, I actually i should say i'm going to play it the night before and then he can have a crack at it so got that on the docket as well yeah between between that and mario yeah. wonder dropping on the same day this is going to be a it's gonna be a dark day did we decide on a, yeah. like a super wonder brothers or spider brother spider wonder brothers did we ever figure out what we're calling that i don't know there has been some good uh, suggestions out there of what, you know, I think there was a, a quest of suggestions of what this would be. And, and uh, yeah, there were some fun creative names that people came up with, but uh, yeah, I think this one's going to be, I think that the replay value for me on a game is what really makes it stand out for this list of like, uh, you know, best of is if I can go back and, and have just a great time playing it again, I think one of the early uncharted games where you're playing a PlayStation game, in a cutscene, like what are they doing? Like this seems so unnecessary. It doesn't really change the story, but this is a cool feature. So little things that they can do to make it have a high replay value for me and my experience makes a list of, of top games. And, and I think that I'm going to be hard pressed to not have this as a replay. So I'm excited to play it Spider-Man two when it comes out and then replay the whole series again, start to finish. All right. Onto a quest, a question from the channel three history books. The one that we've picked here for you to discuss today, a la the Calabunga collection for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. What old school game do you want to see get a collection that gets a modern release that gives us those old school games back? Oh, you know, that's a really great question. And I think I have an answer because it's happening. So what is the, um, uh, there's like this, this company that kind of brings out old school games they re-release them. I'm, I'm blanking on the name of it. Um, I can't remember what it is, but they kind of bring back some old. I can look it up here if you give me a second. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, yeah, me again. This is all going to. Yeah, let me anyway. let me find it here. <laughs> um, I, there's goodness. limited. I know they, there's like limited run games that does like the. Yes, uh, that's it. Limited run games. Thank you. I was blanking there for a moment. Um, so limited run games is is bringing the Jurassic Park old school games like from the NES out as a as a collection. But the one I will say, there was this game on the NES, I don't know if you guys remember this, A Boy and His Blob. Yes, I and do I remember think, that one. I think they had redone it as as kind of a new version, and it looked more almost anime style. But I think that Limited Runs is bringing back the old NES style game, um, re-releasing it onto the Switch. So that that's the one that I, I would be excited about. I just had a core memory unlock that I remembered Woolworths existed. Uh, Ray, I don't know if you remember those back in the day, but Woolworths existed. And uh, that was a boy and his blob was one of those like demo games on Nintendo that, that they had. And that was the only experience I had with that game. I wanted to get it, but never got it. Yeah. And the other one I would love to see is, is Marvel madness. Um, I played that all the time as a kid on the NES. I, I don't know how we don't have that already. That that's, that is confusing. Right. Me. That is not, out it, that and snake it was rat, rattle and rollers are two of the games i'm like where how have these been dead in time i, I don't know yeah and it was and it, i remember playing that and going man this game is wicked hard i don't understand this is so difficult because if the ball that, goes too fast and you're not controlling it right you're going to go flying off the wall there's no there's no barriers to help kind of guide you you have to really be cautious with with how you're moving your your controller and that three-quarter iso view too yeah and the last question we ask everybody, what's been your favorite feature on Channel 3 so far? I love the quests. I think for me, it's really helped pull me away from the time wasting of uh, the other socials that are out there. I'm not on Facebook or Twitter, but I'm on the Instagrams. And uh, that's just a, a time killer. I, there's no benefit to that at all for the most part. <laughs> and so I, I really like the, the features of the quest. I feel like 
it's also a fine line that you got a balance of like not spending too much time on your phone and I should probably be working, right? But man, it's it's fun to go out there and, and try to get some XP and do different stuff and try new games and, and try new challenges that you probably otherwise wouldn't have. So yeah, that's, that's the feature I, I just am really digging right now. All right. And with that, we've made it to the end of another What Are Your Three podcast. Thank you, Lego Dad, for being with us today. You can find the podcast at c3.gg slash podcast, dropping every Wednesday morning at 3.33 a.m. Eastern on all the major platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. I am Ray. Dan Tucker puts this all together. And for our executive producer, Joel Willis, have a good day, everybody. Thank you for humoring us. Much appreciated. guys. Good stuff. I feel so fun. I appreciate it. Sorry, sorry for the ridiculous, but had had to have a little fun there, and uh, that that's even funnier if you did kind of pick up on that on that through the course of time. <laughs> yeah, I I've, I've been trying to you know once you you sent out the invite, I'm like, oh man, I listened to an episode here and there when it first kind of came out, and I saw an ad for it on the you know on the feed, and I was like, oh, this will be great, and and I just get so busy with work, but I'm like, okay, I better do some homework to kind of see how the flow of the show is going and like what people are talking about. And, uh, and as I started listening, I'm like, dang it. I bet you he's talking about me, Uh, (laughs) me again, me again. Oh no, I better have an answer to this. I bet you they're going to call me out and ask me about it. So no, it's good. I know that it's all in fun and games and, and, uh, you know, it doesn't kill anybody or hurt anybody, but, uh, yeah, that was fun. No hurt feelings at all. Just a little fun. So thanks man. Appreciate it.